In 1932, the Buck Rogers radio program, notable as the first science fiction program on radio, hit the airwaves. It was broadcast in four separate runs with varying schedules. Initially broadcast as a 15-minute show on CBS in 1932, it was on a Monday through Thursday schedule. In 1936, it moved to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule and went off the air the same year. Mutual brought the show back and broadcast it three days a week from April to July 1939 and from May to July 1940, a 30-minute version was broadcast on Saturdays. From September 1946 to March 1947, Mutual aired a 15-minute version on weekday 6.23. The radio show again related the story of our hero Buck finding himself in the 25th century. Actors Matt Crowley, Curtis Arnold, Carl Frank and John Larkin all voiced him at various times. The beautiful and strong-willed Wilma Deering was portrayed by Adele Ronson, and the brilliant scientist inventor Dr. Herr was played by Edgar Stelly. The radio series was produced and directed by Carlo D'Angelo and later by Jack Johnstone. Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Buck Rogers is on the air. Brought to you by the makers of Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle, those delicious frozen confections on a stick. And now a message from the famous fellow who won the contest for the typical American boy, Popsicle Pete. Hello, everybody. Did you send in any Popsicle bags for presents yet? Gosh, it feels like Christmas when the postman brings you a package. Better read Popsicle, Creamsicle, or Fudgicle every day. And save up those bags. And be sure you get genuine Popsicle, Creamsicle, or Fudgicle, fellas and girls. Those names must be printed right on the bag if you want free presents. And if you want to get frozen confections that are extra delicious and extra big, genuine Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle. My, are they good, and good for you. When you're tired, they pick you right up because they're full of nourishment, full of energy, and so refreshing. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Do they taste delicious. Sure they do, because they're made fresh every day of the finest ingredients, made only by the best ice cream manufacturers in town. The biggest five cents worth anywhere. Yeah, man. Say, kids, ask at your ice cream store for a free illustrated popsicle gift list. A free coupon comes with it, worth ten bags. And now let's get back to the thrilling adventures of Buck Rogers in the 25th century. And let's see. Kane and our daily, you remember, sent Black Barney out from their secret headquarters to get supplies. Buck and Wilma, meanwhile, have been following Kane's old rocket trail toward the ruins of ancient Philadelphia. But as we pick up our story tonight, we find that the trail has suddenly stopped. Let's join Buck and Wilma there in the control cabin of their rocket plane. Here we go, 500 years into the future. Yes, sir, Wilma, the trail has dropped right off. But, Buck, if Kane turned off the power completely, his ship would drop down and crack up. Not if he used plenty of inertia and lifting power. Yes, and it's an old trick of his to zigzag and coast in order to hide his rocket trail. What are we going to do? Cruise around in circles, I guess, until we pick up the trail where it starts again. Better take it easy, then. Hmm? In this darkness, he might be only a couple of miles away from us, and we wouldn't be able to see him. Unless we spotted the flames from his rocket tubes. Yes, that's true. Uh, I'll start swinging us around, and I'll keep an eye on the gas analyzer dials while you keep a sharp eye ahead. Okay, shoot. And hang on, because I'm going to fly in a tight circle. Sure. Gas analyzer say anything yet? Well, the direction needle gives a little hop now and then, but it's only from traces of old rocket gas that may have been left by most any ship any time. Mm. Well, when we do pick up Kane's trail again, we can be sure it'll be plenty strong. And so fresh, we can't miss it. Mm. Only thing that can keep us from finding it is a cyclone. This slow circling around takes so much time, though. Yeah, and lets Kane get farther and farther away from us. Just what I would... Huh? It's a rocket trail, Wilma. Heading almost due west. Hey. Must be. Watch the analyzer dials turn up to... What's the matter, Buck? Say, didn't that ship Kane took give us readings of 7, 26, and 1.9? That's right. But look, the dials say 122, 13, and 4. Sounds like the exhaust from a ship that carries a rocket dampener. Yes, sir. Was there one of them aboard when Barney and Willie first took off on it? I doubt it, Buck. Just before it was lined up for the test flight. 
Dr. Hewer had every bit of unnecessary equipment taken off. You sure? Quite sure. Well, let's call Dr. Hewer by radio and check on it. Okay. But say, didn't Dr. Hewer say he was going out to Omaha to look over the impenetrite situation? Yeah, but surely he hasn't got started out there yet. Go ahead and call him while I keep us circling around in the hope of picking up another rocket trail. All right. Uh, better use the confidential wavelength, too. Got it. Calling B-121. Calling B-121. This dampened rocket trail is a strong one, though, Wilma. Wilma Deering, calling B-121. And whoever made it must have been traveling pretty fast, because there's so much of it. it makes a real impression on the dial readings. Calling B-121. Of course, Buck. Yeah? Most any commercial ship might have made that trail. But why would a commercial ship use a dampener? Mm, yes, that's true. Calling V-121. Uh, you better try Central Radio Bureau. If the doctor had taken his confidential wave receiver to Omaha with him, well, he'd have answered before this. I guess so. And if Central Radio aren't able to connect you with him, they should at least be able to get a message through to him. I'll try them. You know, as I want them to know why I'm calling the doctor, though. Oh, don't worry about that. They've handled more confidential messages and handled them well than you could shake a stick at. Okay. Calling Central Radio Bureau. Doggone it, I'd certainly like to know about this dampened Central rocket Central Radio, trail. Davidson speaking. This is Lieutenant Wilma Deering. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. I've been trying to reach Dr. Hewer, but haven't had much luck. Do you know where he is? Why, he's on his way out to the city of Omaha, Lieutenant. Oh, already? Yes, to consult with Elmo, the head of that city. Uh, regarding a possible source of impenetrite, I believe. Well, have you any idea how soon he'll arrive there? Yes, about six or seven minutes, I should judge. Uh huh. Is what you have to say to him uh, of a confidential nature? Well, yes. Why? Well, then I'd suggest you wait a few minutes and call on a wavelength of 8.3 centimeters. Uh-huh. Yes, that'll get your call directly to Elmo's office without danger of interception. Well, thank you very much. I'll do it. Signing off. Signing off. You hear that, Buck? Yeah. Give the doctor time to get there and then call him. Right. Meantime, we'll just keep circling around and hope and pray the gas analyzer will pick up the trail we want. Come in. Well, good evening, Elmo. Why, Dr. Hewer. Great day. I'm glad to see you. Well, it's good to see you again. And how are you? Splendid, thank you, sir. Sit right down and be comfortable. Thank you. Well, before we go any further, let me congratulate you on the way you've been handling things here in Omaha. Aye? Yes, indeed. You and your people have done a mighty fine job of things. Since that time we picked you up on the little planetoid out near the orbit of Mars. Uh, but if it weren't for you and Captain Rogers, we might still be out there on that desolate little world. How is Captain Rogers, by the way? And Lieutenant Wilma? Both fine. They asked me to convey their best regards to you. Well, return them, Doctor, a thousandfold. And when are those two coming out here to visit me? Well, not for some time, I'm afraid. Oh, engaged on another thrilling trip into interplanetary space? No, Elmo. No, something far more important than that. Really? What? Well, uh, please remember that what I tell you is in the strictest confidence. Oh, most assuredly, Doctor. Have you ever heard of Killer Kane and Ardela? I certainly have, sir. They are the people who tried to burn up our little planetoid before oh. you rescued us from it. Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> I've forgotten that incident. Yes, but it's true that I haven't heard much about them since that time. Well, not long after, we succeeded in locating them on another small world, one that lies considerably further out in our solar system than the one you and your people occupied. Oh, could it be one of the black planetoids we've all heard so much about? Yes, one that lies out toward the orbit of Pluto. You found them there, eh? After a rather strenuous time of it, we captured them and brought them back here to Earth. They were placed in the Niagara Municipal Prison on a sentence of life in prison. Oh, then congratulations. That's splendid. Mm, it, uh, it was splendid, Elmo. Well, what do you mean, sir? Well, they're at large again. Great day. Buck and Wilma are right now doing everything they can in an attempt to run them down again. Well, have Buck and Wilma found any clues as to their whereabouts? None very tangible, I'm afraid. Well, Doctor, I have boundless faith in those two. If anyone is capable of bringing the criminals to justice, they are. I agree with you, Elmo, wholeheartedly. But you see, well, the situation's been somewhat complicated by the fact that Black Bar... Uh, uh, yes, Doctor? Oh, I, uh, <laughs> I quite forgot... <laughs> I really haven't told you the purpose of my visit. Oh, but you started to say something about... What I came about... here for is to determine whether we'll be able to get a worthwhile amount of impenetrite from the ore fields we discovered near the city a oh. couple of years ago. Oh. 
A new instrument I've developed requires that certain parts be made of impenetrable. Yeah, well, I'll tell you... Ordinarily, we get that element from far off Pluto, but if the ore here is rich enough, save a great deal of time and expense to use it. I'm afraid it's not, Doctor. Hmm? Oh, you, you've you already investigated? Yes. As a matter of fact, I was taking oh. some pride in the fact that we'd be able to surprise you ah. by having gone ahead with the necessary experiments entirely on our own initiative. And, uh... The result of these experiments? Well, samples of the ore with complete analyses probably are waiting for you at your laboratory in Niagara now. Oh, oh really? As a matter of fact, you must have passed the ship that was carrying them on your way out here just now. Oh, that's splendid. Well, then I'll go on back right away. I really had no business leaving Niagara tonight. There's so much demanding my attention there. But it was a good excuse to see and talk with you again, so I just hopped into my ship and came along. Well, I'm mighty glad you did. But now I, I must go. I'll go out the back door of this office, if you don't mind, because it's more convenient to where I park my rocket plane. Why, certainly, Doctor. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. And the next time you come to Omaha, you must plan to stay longer. And bring Buck and Wilma with you. All right, Elmo. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. <laughs> Black Barney. Yeah. Surprised to see me? Oh, yes. Too bad you couldn't have arrived a moment ago. Huh? Uh, well, Dr. Hewitt just left. What was he doing here? Well, really more of a visit than anything else. At least it turned out that way. Oh. Well, what can I do for you, my friend? Well, I'm all... Uh, I'm on what you might sort of call official business. Yeah. Uh, maybe you don't know it, but... Uh, Kill a cane in our daylight. Yes, you know. I, I know. Uh, Dr. Hewitt just told me about them. Oh, he did? Yes. Well, uh, uh, did he tell you I'm out looking for him? No, I don't think so. Well, I am, see? And I gotta have a lot of equipment and stuff. Uh, can you give me it? Oh, I'd be glad to. Okay. I got a ship parked out front so as we can start loading the stuff and things onto it right away. Your men can pick out my ship on account of it has a rocket dampener onto it. Well, uh, uh, yeah, yes, of course. Now, uh, first I gotta have a battle cruiser and a long range atomic disintegrator, and paralysis rays and rocket guns, and a lot of other stuff. Gone it, Wilma. I wonder why we don't pick up that rocket trail. I mean, the right one. Well, Buck. Yeah? You suppose Kane could have done something to Barney's ship that would make it leave the kind of trail we found? Sure, it's possible. It's much more likely, though, that the ship has a rocket dampener on it we don't know anything about. But say, uh, isn't it about time you put through that call to Dr. Hewer to check up on it? Oh, yes, I guess. Hmm. What's the matter? Nothing, but... Directly below us. What? The ruins of ancient Philadelphia, where Professor Smith, the mad scientist, had his headquarters. My golly, Wilma, I wonder. Just what I was thinking. Yes, sir. Hang on while I swing it. Buck Rogers. No, listen. Calling Buck Rogers. It's Dr. Hewer. I'll take it. Hello, Doctor? Buck, I'm on my way back to Niagara from Omaha. So soon? Yes. I just got a call from Elmo to the effect that shortly after I left there, Black Barney dropped in on him. What? Barney picked up a lot of equipment. A whole rocket plane full, as a matter of fact, and then left immediately. Great day. So my suggestion is that you and Wilma, in your fast ship, go out there to Omaha immediately. Doctor, we're on our way. Good. Wilma, hang on for power. Well, you're ceasing out there after Barney are really getting somewhere. somewhere. But I'm certainly sorry that it didn't stop and investigate the old headquarters of Professor Smith. Gee, some excitement. Do I feel warm? Wish I had a great big frozen fudgicle. Say, can you imagine anything better than that creamy chocolate fudge frozen ice cold on a stick? Well, I can't. And fellas and girls, what's the best, purest, biggest nickel's worth you can get? Right, a fudgicle. Delicious and full of healthful energy. Yes, a genuine fudgicle is as rich in milk solids as a glass of milk. Swell to eat, easy to digest, and made fresh every day. Uh, don't forget to save bags from Fudgicle, Popsicle, and Creamsicle for those wonderful free prizes. Cameras, dolls, sweatshirts, and just lots of other things. Listen, kids, 
Be sure to get your free Popsicle gift list at your ice cream store. Don't take no for an answer. Buck and Wilma's picture's on it, too. 